worship with Trinity Lutheran Church in Monticello. I'm Pastor Amy Chalupnik, and I'm so happy to be worshiping with you today. A uh, special note, if you have not yet downloaded a bulletin, one may do so right from our website, www.tlcmonticello.org. There are also children's bulletins, too, for your use. You'll notice that the bold print indicates all read, and I invite you worshiping to sing as fully and participate as fully as you are able from your homes. Let us open our worship in song. of the Holy Spirit be with you all and also with you let us pray Almighty God we thank you for planting in us the seed of your word by your Holy Spirit help us to receive it with joy live according to it and grow in faith and hope and love through Jesus Christ our Savior and Lord Amen. Amen. You may be seated as we hear the word. A reading from Isaiah 55. For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return there until they have watered the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose and succeed in the thing for which I sent it. For you shall go out in joy and be led back in peace. The mountains and the hills before you burst into song, and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Instead of the thorn shall come up the cypress, instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle, and it shall be to the Lord for a memorial for an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. Word of God, word of life. Thanks Thanks be be to God. God. We'll now read Psalm 65 responsively. Praise is due to you, O God, in Zion, and to you shall vows be performed. O you who answer prayer, to you all flesh shall come. When deeds of iniquity overwhelm us, You forgive our transgressions. Happy are those whom you choose and bring near to live in your courts. We shall be satisfied with the goodness of your house, your holy temple. By awesome deeds you answer us with deliverance, O God of our salvation. You are the hope of all the ends of the earth and the farthest seas. By your strength you established the mountains. You are girded with might. 
You silence the roaring of the seas, the roaring of their waves, the tumult of the peoples. Those who live at earth's farthest bounds are awed by your signs. You make the gateways of the morning and the evening shout for joy. You visit the earth and water it abundantly. You make it very plenteous. The river of God is full of water. You prepare the grain, for so you provide for the earth. You drench the furrows and smooth out the ridges. With heavy rain, you soften the ground and bless its increase. You crown the year with your goodness, and your paths overflow with plenty. May the fields of the wilderness be rich for grazing, and the hills be clothed with joy. May the meadows cover themselves with flocks, and the valleys cloak themselves with grain. Let them shout for joy and sing. Good morning, kids. Good to see you. Come on up, it's time for the children's message. Get a little closer. Sit right down here by me. We are out in my backyard again, except this time we're in my garden. That's right, we're right next to my garden where I grow all kinds of vegetables. And I brought some props today. Can you see this? What are these? That's right, they're seeds. They're seeds. In a few moments, I'm going to be reading from the gospel, and we're going to learn about how Jesus told a parable about a sower who sowed seeds. And so we're going to talk about seeds today, too, because Jesus said the word of God is like seeds, and they're scattered far and wide. Sometimes, they fall in a path, kind of a crumbly path, maybe a cement slab, and birds just come and eat it. Sometimes they fall on rocky soil, and a little growth comes up, but then they die out, or they're easy to be plucked up. Sometimes the Word of God falls on interested ears, and then it starts to sprout, but with time, that too gets choked out by weeds, as there's too many weeds, like my garden. I have a lot of weeds in my garden, but we'll talk about that next week. Anyway, sometimes the Word of God falls in good soil. Good soil, which means people that are ready to receive the Word of God and celebrate it and are happy by it and filled. And then it not only becomes a little shoot and grows, it grows bigger and bigger, just like, well, just like I did with this. This is a bean seed. And I didn't just throw them, I planted them. And not all of them came up, but these did. See how big? And healthy they are and they have some buds on them because they are blooming they are going to bear fruit and what does fruit of a bean plant look like well it looks kind of like this do you see those big beans these are frozen beans from my last year's garden and I hope that I have lots more but Jesus was telling his disciples this parable, not because they're seeds, or not because they're dirt or dirty, although they were pretty dirty because they walked around a lot in the dust, but because of our hearts. Are our hearts ready to receive Jesus? Are our hearts ready to blossom and bloom and grow? And it does take a lot because we have to water these and it has to get some sunshine, but God provides that too. That's what our Psalm says. God provides everything that we need. We just need to be willing to grow and learn and eventually produce more beans or fruit for Jesus. And you know what that is? 
If I planted this bean, it might grow another bean. It might. And if I planted these, they sure would grow more beans. And that's what Jesus is inviting all of his disciples to do, is to share God's word with each other so that everybody can grow big and strong and be feeling like they are loved by God. And then also, they can produce lots of fruit. Fruit or vegetables, right? All kinds of goodness to eat and to refresh us and nourish us. That's what God's word does. God's word nourishes us and can grow within us become big and strong, and then feed others. And that's our lesson for today. Thanks for coming up, kids. You can go back to your seats. And next week, we're going to talk a little bit more about the seeds that became plants and all my other weeds that I've got growing here. Thanks for coming up. Let's have a prayer. You can repeat after me if you feel comfortable. Dear Jesus. Dear Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. For giving us your word. For giving us your word. Help us to share. Help us to share. Your word with others. Your word with others. And help us. And help us. To grow in faith. To grow in faith. To get big and strong. To get big and strong. So that we can. So that we can. Bear fruit. Bear fruit. Like beans. Like beans. To share with others. To share with others. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thanks, kids. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory, Glory to, to you, you O oh Lord. Lord. That same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the sea. Such great crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat there while the whole crowd stood on the beach. And he told them many things in parables, saying, Listen, a sower went out to sow. And as he sowed, some seeds fell on the path. And the birds came and ate them up. Other seeds fell on the rocky ground, where they did not have much soil, and they sprang up quickly, since they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched, and since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among the thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil and brought forth grain, some hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Let anyone with ears listen. Hear the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what is sown in the heart. This is what was sown on the path. As for what was sown on the rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it in joy. Yet such a person has no root, but endures only for a while, and when trouble or persecution arises on account of the word, that person immediately falls away. As for what was sown among thorns, this is the one who hears the word. But the cares of the world and the lure of wealth choke the word, and it yields nothing. But as for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields, in one case a hundredfold, in another sixty, and in another thirty. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to, to you, you, O Christ. Christ. Grace and peace to you. Grace and peace from the one true God. Amen. Jesus calls this the parable of the sower. Did you catch that? 
right in our reading. And that is a good title for this parable. For the sower is prolific in their work, scattering the word of God throughout the land, speaking the word in every place, throwing it out there, throwing it out there for all to hear and to receive. Indiscriminatorily. Indiscriminatorily. Now that's a hundred dollar word. Kids, that's a word for the day. Eighteen letters of how the word of God is shared by Jesus Christ without partiality, without presumption or bias or favoritism. God's word is for all. Pathways, rocky ground, among the thorns or weeds, good soil. The sower is prolific in their work, scattering the word of God to all and for all. But the focus of Christ's explanation seems not to be the sower or even the seed that is the word of God, but on the type of soil which falls which on which it falls and on which it grows or doesn't. Unlike some of Jesus' parables, this one seems pretty clear. What circumstances and situations allow for a seed to grow, mature, and bear fruit? In some cases, as much as a hundredfold. In others, 60, and in others, 30. The answer is clear. Good soil. This is not a trick question. The answer is obvious. This is like a children's message for all those hearers of Jesus. The answer is good soil. In a few minutes, we are going to sing one of my favorite little songs, a little song that's a request to God to be just that, good soil. Now, Jesus does not go into much detail as to what makes for good soil. How do we ensure that our hearts are open? How do we ensure that our hearts are not filled with our own desires, that the troubles of this world and our own problems do not stifle the growth of the word within us and around us? How can we allow God's word to take root in our lives so that transformation and development and the production of plentiful fruit is possible? both personally and communally. Perhaps therein lies the challenge of this parable. The answer to the parable is clear. Be good soil. But even though the answer of the parable is clear, at the same time, it is anything but easy. Because good soil is almost unnatural. Good soil takes work. Good soil takes tending and care and preservation and fertilization. Yes, there are areas of this world and people of this world perhaps more predisposed to fruitfulness, to godly produce. But even in those areas, in those peoples, well, they need to be fed and nourished, weeded and treated, turned over, dug up and cultivated. The truth about it is this. Good soil or rocky soil, pressed down paths or overgrown fields, we all need God's help to flourish. Think about it. Even if you are a bag of the best potting soil money can buy, if you are a fox farm or a miracle grower, black gold, or something like that, or even the best farmland you could buy. You would eventually, of course, need what? You'd need some sun. You'd need some water. You'd need some drainage. And eventually, you'd need some peat moss and some tilling under and some rest, some refinement, and yes, Maybe even some manure, 
zam shi dung. If Christ is the sower, and God's word is the seed, and we are the soil, then maybe what we should be praying for this week is the work of the Holy Spirit. For the farmer or the gardener of the Holy Spirit can sustain us and change us to be good and productive and fruitful soil. However we start out as a dusty path worn and walked on, or as a rocky terrain hardened and dangerous, or a field of weeds and thorns just struggling to produce anything good, or even to see the good, or a garden of moist and nutrient-rich soil, the Holy Spirit can change us, all of us, to be good soil. Let that be our plea, our song, our prayer. Lord, let my heart be good soil. And help me to recognize when I am not. And help me to accept your care and your correction when I need it. I do invite you to sing that little song with me. It's the song of the day. Once in response to the message, and then open your hearts and minds for the churning and the tilling and the weeding of the Spirit as we listen to the music once without lyrics. And then for a third time, as we repeat the song as a prayer, as a person, a family, a community in prayer, that we may embrace what God can make of us, even if, no, when, even when, it's not easy. For grain of sand or one speck of dirt never makes for good soil. We need a lot of dirt bound together for one divine purpose. For together we can bear fruit, teaching and nourishing one another, correcting and encouraging one another, and faithfully following God to produce fruit. Amen. Let us sing. Open 
into the seed of your word. Lord, let my heart be good soul, where love can grow and peace is understood. When my heart is hard, break the stone away. When my heart is cold, warm it with the day. When my heart is lost, lead me on your way. Lord, let my heart, Lord, let my heart, Lord, let my heart be good soul. Called into unity with one another and with all of creation, let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. Gracious God, your word has been sown in many ways and in many places. We pray for missionaries and newly planted congregations around the world. Inspire us by their witness to the faith that we share. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, hear our prayer. prayer. Reigning God, we pray for our state and national leaders. Increase their desire for justice and equality. Increase in their desire for the health and well-being of your beloved. Guide authorities to make good decisions. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Abiding God, care for all in need, especially those suffering from the effects of all diseases and a virus known to us now all too well, COVID-19. We pray especially for those listed on our prayer list and those that we bring to you in the quiet of our hearts. We pray for those who are doubting. Renew their faith, O oh God. We pray for those who are worrying. Provide release. We pray for those who are struggling, ease their burdens. We pray for those in fear, give them hope. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Renewing God, nourish and nurture the seeds that you have planted, that we may grow as your disciples, being your disciples in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Receive these prayers, O God, and all that we have named in the quiet of our hearts. For you taught us to pray in the name of Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray. Our, our Father, Father, who art, art in, in heaven, heaven, hallowed, hallowed be, be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We receive our morning's offering, giving back a portion of what God has blessed us with, and that which we have worked for, so that God can reign in this world through us and through this community. God bless our offering today. And we thank you, Sharon Cloth, for having recorded this special offering piece.
Having received our morning's offering, we offer a prayer. O oh God, we bring our tithes and offerings to you as part of our act of praise and thanksgiving. Bless these gifts and give us eyes to see your good works in and through this community of faith. May our hearts be full of gratitude and wonder for all you have done and continue to do for us. Amen. Amen. It's the time in our worship when I have a chance to bring your attention to a number of things in the bulletin and a few things that perhaps are not. The first announcement for today is that Vacation Bible School in a Box is coming on July the 15th. You should have received an email from Annie, and I want to give you a little bit of background about that. This box is going to have everything your kids or grandkids need to enjoy Vacation Bible School at home. It's going to have craft supplies and a Bible story. It's going to have coloring sheets and a prayer card. It's even going to have snack ideas. And we're going to deliver that right to your home. There will also be links to YouTube videos so you can follow along with your regular Vacation Bible School teachers and Pastor Amy. If you miss the first session in July, you're also welcome to join us for the second session in August, which is August the 19th and 20th. But do remember to email Annie by July the 18th to sign up for that. Her email is in your bulletin. And I will make one comment. Uh, parents and grandparents, if you could get out your cell phones or your cameras and take a few pictures of your kids enjoying Christian learning at home, we would love those for our August newsletter. It's always great to see photos of kids. We hope you have a fun week. You should have received in the mail a COVID-19 preparedness survey. Uh, that came out from our preparedness team. And if you haven't already done so, if you would complete the survey and return it in the enclosed self-addressed stamp envelope that was provided. And my last announcement for today is that online worship assistants are still needed. I'm so very thankful to all that have stepped up and read or played the piano or submitted something in an email. We're thankful for all of your help during this time. Those that are in a low risk for coronavirus or those that just want to come and worship in this space together doesn't take that long on a Wednesday afternoon. Maybe you'd consider recording one at home and submitting just like Sharon did. Thank you to all who helped make worship possible and all of you who are contacting each other at home through our happiness baskets as well. And that's all the announcements that I have for today. Let's continue with our worship. And now receive a blessing. May our great God turn your worries into opportunities and our uncertainties into hope. May Jesus Christ give us peace and newness of life. And may you live in the promises of the Spirit forever. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Yeah. Mm -hmm.
Sub.